Good morning, folks. I'm out here on the range today, and I'm going to be doing another one of my pack T tests. And today, it's the 147 grain standard spear gold dot. Standard. It's not the G2 with the elastomer. We did that test. Go ahead and catch up on that uh, using the links in the description uh, below. This is the standard 147 grain gold dot. I've tested the 124 grain gold dot, pretty darn good bullet. Now we're doing the 147. And here's what we're gonna do with this pack t test. Precision, accuracy, and consistency. I'm gonna be shooting 15 yards at the, uh, that target right over here. Off of the bench, I'm gonna get precision, extreme spread of a five shot group, accuracy, bullseye score for that same five shot group. Consistency comes from the lab radar chronograph. We're looking at the standard deviation of muzzle velocities for that same five shot group. Then I'm gonna be turning my attention to this uh, clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin, 20% NATO uh, gel block, one shot from seven yards to test its terminal performance. Now I'm also going to be doing uh, and recording the recoil, recoil impulse, recoil response using the Mantis X10. We're gonna be comparing that to my standard 115 grain uh, CCI blazer brass round nose bullet, and we'll see how shootable this round is in comparison. Got it? Cool, we'll go ahead and get started. Looks like from here, that has shot pretty nicely. Let's take a look at the chronograph results. 11 feet per second, standard deviation, so the consistency is pretty darn good. We're not even in the teens, so we're not down in single digits either, but yeah, that's not too bad. Hey, time to put one round into the clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin from a distance of seven yards. Well, there's our gel block, and there is the gold dot, standard gold dot, 147 grain, and it expanded. It did a better job than our G2 that we tested in a previous pack t test. It's at about 15 and a half, maybe 15 and three quarter inch total penetration. I will get an exact measurement on this when I get it back to the house and dig all this out. Now that went pretty well. Hey, let's take a look at all of these results. Beginning with the bullseye target. Bullseye target, again, from 15 yards, five shot group, 0 0.587 extreme spread. That is our precision measurement. And we ended up scoring 40 points, zero in the X though. But as I've said in lots of my videos, but I haven't said it in this video, my HKVP9 is not zeroed for this particular bullet. Uh, and so you really can't expect it to shoot at the dead bullseye. So if I had readjusted those sights so that it were zeroed, 
it would have scored much better on the accuracy part of this test, as we're seeing right here. Consistency, that is the standard deviation of muzzle velocities, and we got a very respectable 11 feet per second standard deviation. Um, now, 1,008 feet per second for a 147 grain bullet, that's the average velocity. That's right there in the ballpark, right where it pretty much should be. And uh, again, 147 grains, I haven't seen a one that is supersonic. They are more or less by default subsonic. This one fits the same bill. I shot a five shot group offhand, that was my warm up. I did it kind of off camera because I was recording the Mantis X10 recoil meter setting. And I like to compare this to a standard 9mm round, 115 grain, something many of you, maybe most of you, have already shot the CCI Blazer Brass. So we look at this comparison and we see that, yes, this 147 is slightly slower. We expect that. Recovery time, 0.64 seconds. That's very nice. Quite a bit less. Um, of the recovery time compared to the CCI Blazer Brass. But as we have seen with lots of these 147 grains, slightly more muzzle rise. Those are the two indicators that I think are most important to estimate shootability, how comfortable a gun is to shoot or how comfortable a round is to shoot. And so this is, this is just a fine round easy for a person, if you like this, easy for you to get very uh, proficient with it, and it's not going to, probably won't uh, induce any flinching, those sorts of things. Now what do they mean, by the way, of um, recovery time? Well, what that means is how long does it take from the time that the trigger breaks, right? Trigger breaks, how long does it take for that muzzle to return down to that same angle, if you want to call it that, the same plane, what's the amount of time that that takes? That's the estimate that immediately then you could shoot. That doesn't mean that I did shoot, but I could have shot and probably would have hit that target in very much the same place as my previous shot. Now let's take a look at the terminal ballistic results. This is the bullet right there. That's the bullet right there. And it's not a fantastic expansion, but it did expand. Um, I can see right in here, and I hope you can see it as well, some material looks fibrous, looks like part of my Carhartt jacket. Very, very likely. It, I don't think it's the leather, probably the Carhartt jacket. And in fact, I have another piece that this looks like it is leather here um, that was clogging, semi-clogging this bullet and I think that it reduced the amount of, of expansion or mushrooming of this particular bullet. But it did, it did expand. So that is really important when we consider lethality because a larger projectile, the frontal um, section, the frontal section of a larger projectile is going to cause more damage, uh, plus these very sharp edges are also going to enhance the lethality of this bullet. We got 15 and a half inches of penetration, did a very good uh, measurement before I cut open that gel block and removed this bullet. That's pretty nice for the penetration part or component of our scoring mechanism, which follows a modified FBI protocol. Now I say that it's a modified FBI protocol because the FBI protocol follows along with natural ballistic gelatin um, and also the 10% synthetic ballistic gelatin. I'm shooting 20% ballistic gelatin considered a NATO block and so the modification has been made um, for the heavier or more dense gel block. 
This bullet did not lose any weight. It retained 100% uh, of its weight. Overall, the score was 345 points. Didn't break into our 400 club, as I noted earlier. Did not do that. By the way, the maximum score for this entire test is 500 points. We haven't quite gotten anything in the 500 points or to hit 500 points or anything really, really close. But we've gotten some really excellent bullets. If you're interested in uh, seeing some other pac t tests that we've done in the past, take a look at the link in the description. Watch for that playlist link and you have a link then to every one of the pac t tests that we have done over the years. Well, you know, the, the old, venerable, legendary gold dot, it is a good bullet. Um, the 124, 115, probably more along the lines of that legendary status. And of course, the 45 ACP uh, gold dot, really, really excellent bullets. The problem that has happened uh, with the uh, gold dot uh, and it's pretty well known in the shooting community, is that it does tend to clog, clog through clothing, uh, those sorts of things. Um, not always, but it does sometimes. This one, I think, wanted to clog, or initially it did clog, but it kind of overcame it, uh, or uh, overcome it, and, uh, and it, did, it did expand okay. It did a pretty nice job. 0.498 is the actual measurement, 140% expansion. So, there we have it. Nice wrap up, pretty darn good bullet. If you've got some questions, some ideas, some comments, maybe you'd like to see us do a specific video, pack t, uh, pack t test video on a bullet that you're interested in, pop that into the comment section below. And thanks a bunch for watching.